Jeffrey Moore, the author of Crossing the Chasm, is also the godfather of insight selling. In March 2009, the Harvard Business Review published his article, In a Downturn, Provoke Your Customers. The first question for my guest is, what do you see are the risks to insight selling today? By the way, when solution selling was occupying the space, insight selling now occupies. And what tends to happen to these things is, when they first show up, it's like, yes, that's the key idea. And then what happens is, almost immediately, they get kind of encased in a kind of a sort of slick brochure, and, and, and the whole notion of, of, of really being in service to the customer's problem starts being turned into a set of manipulative behaviors. And it's like, and then you got to you start a new one, right? So I think, it, I think this notion of continually trying to find ways to refresh people's perspective on what they're doing is important. So how do salespeople refresh their customer's perspective without getting a black eye? The, the most obvious path forward is, is to demonstrate you care and then to challenge. Uh, if you're in a service profession, and I would argue that all sales and service and customer support people are, then it's important that you genuinely be in service. If you if you provoke or challenge without caring, it's probable you're going to generate a defensive reaction. If you're not genuinely in service to the customer, sooner or later the customer senses that, and then they figure out a way to deflect you. What mindset should salespeople have to provoke customers with insight? When people are they need thought leadership, and, and they need they need to be challenged. They need to have their mental models and their fundamental assumptions challenged. And um, and I think they appreciate it, provided that it's not done with arrogance. You know, it's done with humility, but it's also done with with um, firmness of purpose. So you you're not you don't waffle, and you, you say, and, but 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 it's done with an open mind. And, and and you're bringing kind of a beginner's mind to their business because it's there. You know you don't know their business. They know their business, but you're bringing some sort of new perspective on it, and they're usually struggling, or they wouldn't be, you wouldn't be having the conversation. And they're interested in how what happens when they apply your perspective, you know, particularly if, if, if it's applied, as I said, with respect and humility, but with firmness and purpose. Can you give me an example? Provocation is, we think the world has shifted. We think you should have another set of priorities. Obviously, you don't yet, because your budget doesn't reflect that. Let's have that conversation. Maybe we're just full of baloney, but maybe we're not. And 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 that's a conversation which which executives enjoy because it, you know it allows them to step back from their business for a moment. Say, wow, well, I, let's look at my business through this lens and see what happens. And as long as you're not, as long as you're, you you give create you, you create enough space to have the conversation without immediately reaching for somebody's checkbook or asking for an order. Because in the first conversation, all you want to do is seed the idea and see if there's permission to explore it further. Do you feel stories are an effective way to deliver insight? Trying to build a new understanding, I think it starts fundamentally with story. I think the analytics and theory are the post-processing of narratives. Nice speaking to you, Jeffrey. I really appreciate it. Okay, take care, Michael. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye.